Hello guys, today we have a very special video. I have a guest, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> Who is this man? Please introduce yourself. Hey, so my name's Sam. I am a self-taught perfumer and I have my own perfume brand, Luxetera. And I also run a YouTube channel teaching other people how to make perfumes. Yeah, I, I'm very happy that you're here because we, we, I only learned about you from watching your videos and then I, we learned later on that we actually live quite close to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it was all coincidental. You send me some of your creations to try out. You do your own perfumery and you're one of the few channels where people can actually learn how to make perfumes. Yeah. It's so rare. Uh, it's incredible. Um, so, you know, the community is very grateful for the videos Thanks. we do, man. And um, yeah, we have a video today. What are we doing today? So today we are blind smelling some perfumes, I think, right? Yes, people can see the video title for this yes. later on. Uh, so these fragrances are, fit a criteria that's related to the title. And uh, I'm going to get a professional like yourself uh, to try them out. So as a, as a perfumer, I must know as a self-taught perfumer, I'm someone who's quite interested in creating perfumes. Yeah. But despite that, it may sound odd, but I haven't actually smelled that many perfumes from the shops. Yeah. So, I don't know if you're going to be showing me niche perfumes, popular perfumes, or what you're going to show me, but there's a good chance that most of them I actually haven't smelled before. Yeah, people are shocked. You're not the only perfumer on this <laughs> platform who said that. That People are shocked that people who make perfumes are a very different kind of cohort of people who actually smell the mainstream stuff. Fantastic. This, this is going to be a very good video then. We want your honest, brutal opinion <laughs> yeah. on these uh, mainstream fragrances, and let's see how it goes. So, let's get started. <laughs> You're gonna turn around now. I'm gonna okay. spray the paper strips. All right, I sprayed them. You weren't looking. You were sipping looking. on your on your on, on your pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> All right. I wish I was a pumpkin spice latte, man. Sorry, we can't please everyone in these. Uh, tell them the <laughs> there you are. Okay. First, says... first fragrance. Oh, you put it on the other end. Interesting. Oh god, I messed up, guys. <laughs> We've got an actual professional here. <laughs> I feel like this one reminds me of uh, Miss Romantic. Yeah, you smelled this before, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, smelled, you smelled our second fragrance. I, I, just, I thought, oh, like, I, I thought like I got a quick summary for yeah. you about our second release because it's, it's a shameless plug. Yeah, no, I like this perfume. I think it's cool. I actually, so I was, I smelled this before and I was talking yeah. to you about it the other day, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I prefer, I like the first one, but I think I prefer this one for sure than you the first you like one. You like the nice one, um, Mr. Fragrance, okay, yeah. Yeah, so Mr. Fragrance was like quite rooty, I felt like vetiver, woody. It, yeah. it felt to me quite like in the forest, quite like down and dirty, kind of down strong. And dirty. Like, yeah. No, yeah. Not, not really, but like it was, it was like a strong vetiver fragrance. Yeah, whereas this, this is like a marshmallow cloud kind of thing. It's like a nice, no, not not in like a sweet way, but it's like a nice like soft white musk with hints of sweetness. But it's got its something about it. It's got its own kind of little kind of sparkle to it. Its own kind of color. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's cool. This idea is it's meant to be like a, a fragrance you wear to a date yeah. all year round. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's meant to be have. It's meant to be quite balanced. That's the idea of our releases. Yeah. That you, you get value for your money. Yeah, like, can you use it all year round? So yeah, I feel like it, like if you were wearing this this perfume, I kind of want to come and hug you. You know, it's oh, it's very nice. Oh, it's <laughs> like, working, guys. It's like. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, I like it. Nice. Good. All right, let's move on to the main list now. No more tricks, okay? <laughs> All right, so. So to me, this is like very much a citrusy, or at least what well, I can smell at the moment, like a, mm. a strongly kind of lemon slash bergamot top note, something okay. like that. Um, it's very kind of fizzy citrus. Okay. Which to me is like the, the bergamot smell that you get. I often find with these lemon top notes, they don't last that long. No. So I'll be interested to know what happens after the lemon top note with a fragrance like this. What would you give it out of 10? Um, so for me, it's not my my kind of thing that much, mm. like a strongly kind of, that kind of like classic clone citrus. Mm -hmm. So I probably wouldn't give it like a personal rating, but I at the same time think it seems to be balanced like fairly nicely. So maybe like a 6.5? 6.5, okay. But that's more like a bit subjective as well. Like if you really like a a kind of slightly woody, citrusy cologne. No, no, forget what everyone else thinks. It's just, just your would, brutal you would, opinion. You know, then it's then it's going to be higher. So okay. What would you give Mr. Romantic out of ten? Um, I think uh, maybe an eight point five. Eight point five. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. Romantic's beach Chanel. <laughs> Laura Edition Blanche. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I would definitely like if I had the choice between the two, I'd prefer Mr. Romantic. I think. Fantastic. Oh, that's I mean, great. So this one, I smell like. A certain aroma chemical known in perfumery called undecovertal or something oh, wow. similar, which is similar to like a violet leaf absolute kind of note. Ah, okay. So it's like a, it's yeah, weird. A very good note. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Like a, it's like almost like a watermelon-like smell. This note can be quite difficult to use. It's very strong. 
However, in this perfume, it actually has been blended in very nicely. So I think for me, that already that's already pretty good. You appreciate the creativity a lot more. I, than I, pr I appreciate the, the creativity in this one. It's a bit more unusual. I, haven't, I don't think I've smelled something that's quite exactly this combination of notes before. What would you give it out of 10, Mr. Mason? Mm, I don't know. Maybe again, like an 8.5, 8. .5, 8. Nice. Maybe an 8. Um, nice. That's quite a polarizing. I don't know. I, so. I quite like it. I, I think, yeah, I quite like it. Nice. Man, this reminds me of something, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. So it's like it's like a pleasant smell, right? It's quite nice, but it, it's also like very. It feels quite like generic -y in a sense. It feels very. It doesn't have like a soup like a personality. It's just like a, just like a, a general kind of, like, like a nice smell. What are some notes you're getting from it? Well, that's the problem with it. I I can't. I find it very hard to pick out the notes in this. I think for someone a bit more reserved, maybe. I think it's a bit more feminine than masculine. Um, what would you give it out of 10? I would give it a 7. 7 out of 10. For me. Okay. Um, but I think for the right person, this could, I could see them this being like a very like discreet, um, just nice, okay. in their point of view, perfume. Nice. All right, uh, Aaron, Terence Hughes, uh, do you want to go for this paper strip here? I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, this is like, this is like super ethyl molotov kind of, uh, oh, you definitely are Aaron Terence Ever though, like, Veramos kind of smell. Yeah, ethyl maltol is like a base note in a similar way to like vanilla. Um, ethyl maltol is kind of... It's sweet, isn't it? Like? It's a sweet, it's like a gourmand note, and it's... Um, well, it's a bit like a candy floss note, let's oh, say. Right, yeah. So, like, imagine that sugary candy floss taste. It's like that as a smell. Okay. That's um, pretty much. Okay. What do you think of this one? So, this reminds me of, like, the Baccarat Rouge uh, kind of smell. Um, that, like... Or, and also kind of like the... That classic um, angel like gourmand oh, thing. Oh right, yeah. That kind of style M of where, Mugler. Mugler yeah, Mugler 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 angel, Mugler. where where you have like the ethyl malto as like a very prominent note. You okay. usually add like patchouli to this kind of thing as well. Mm. But yeah, it's that, and it also smells like it could have something like a lavender or bergamot, some kind of linalool containing natural in the top note. Well, um, linalool is like a lily of the valley material. It's, it's like a a an aroma chemical that's found in a lot of different naturals. Okay. Um, but it's found across the board in like so many things that it's almost impossible to pin down what it's like on its mm. own It smells I find a bit of like a kind of sweet herbal smell. Okay. Yeah, how would I rate it? Um, I feel like there are a lot of perfumes in this genre and I feel like this one doesn't stand out so I wouldn't rate it that high maybe. Okay. I'll give it the So maybe I'll give it a six I think because okay. I think something like this isn't really hard, hard to make um, like to make a, for me to make something like this, I mean no no but like maybe no, it's no. not gonna smell like be the same. That's why people should go to your channel because this, this guy. <laughs> yeah, um, I smell your stuff. You know you're, you're very good. So yeah, I I, I can actually imagine to make that. to make like not 100 percent this, but to make like 85 percent the yeah. ballpark of yeah, perfume. Yeah, yeah. It's like you only need a few things, um, and I'm not getting something from it that is super original. Okay. That's making it wow. So I, I, I just don't see how I could give more than say like a six or, or five or something like that. All right, uh, let's go to the next, to the, to the last fragrance now. So if you pick up Is that fragrance. Is this one? Yeah, that's it. I, I smelled something and I was like for a second, hmm, that, I know what that is. And then it slipped my mind. It smells like a rose based perfume with maybe some kind of like woody notes or oud notes or something. Maybe, I don't know, but definitely rose. Um, and maybe some violet notes. Yeah, violet notes in there as well. So it's got like some iron own, I think. Iron nose are based off like violet yeah. leaf, uh, the violet flower, yeah. isn't it? Which is, yeah. I, just, I come on to this stuff, yeah, I'm saying yeah. these weird words, and your viewers are probably like, yeah. What is it's this? like the same concept we described before. They take a certain yeah. part of violet flower and isolate yeah. it to use it. These molecules, um, if you have, do you know the Palmer Violet Sweets? Uh, I, I know of them, I, never, I can't remember their taste. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But like a classic violet flavoring, you might find any any food that's got a violet flavoring. Okay. You know, that that kind of taste, right? That violet taste that comes to mind. That is just basically iron nodes, which are class of molecules you can put in perfumes so it smells like there's some of those in there as well what's your overall opinion of this fragrance and this construction so i think it's well constructed because i think rose is really hard to use actually it's very hard to use um so i think it's just technically for that reason quite good it's because it smells quite nice mm. i wouldn't say it smells like again it's not super like insanely creative or anything mm. but it's like it's well put together it's it's i think it's just that if you want like a, a nice rose fragrance that's like well done and it's nothing like crazy special, but it's like, you know, it's solid. It's like you wear this and like 10 out of 10 people already say, oh, that smells nice. Okay. You know, it's just like a, a crowd pleaser fragrance. Is, That's, it a, is it a men's or women's fragrance? 
So I think this could be either actually because yeah, unisex. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it could be either. So that's Moschino Toy Boy, which is like a teddy bear bottle you might oh, see yeah. in, in the. Oh yeah. Store. You might yeah. yeah, at least it's quite prominent. Uh, and what would you give that out of ten? Um, so I would I would actually give that like an eight out of ten. And but oh, saying okay. that, I would put it on the same as the other one. I would actually move up that other one from before. I think. Mm. Remember, did so I give you it gave, a seven. You gave them the Weedle I think like a six. I don't know. We had to oh, watch the video back. Or, but, uh, okay, yeah. I would maybe I'll bump that up to a seven then. Okay. I still I prefer this one. Still, but I think they're actually both in like a similar category. I would put up like crowd pleasing, like just you can put it on, like they're pretty fail safe. So daily frames as you just wear as like a safe. Yeah, like it, would, it wouldn't be like insanely like, wow, like this perfume is something special, but it's like, to me, like these are just solid picks. Like you can't go wrong with them. They're just like well blended, well balanced. Amazing, fantastic. That's it, that's, that's all the paper, that's yeah. all the strips there, guys. Um, so the criteria for this video was that I insist <laughs> that these fragrances, subjectively, my to my opinion, they are ten out of tens. Oh. <laughs> I, I have like the, so you know I, I like the fact that you didn't give any of them tens. Um, mm. um, it's hard for me to read these though because like I feel like when I like when I say a number, I haven't really had a time to properly like yeah, digest course. it. So I'm this having is, to give like really serious rough video. ballpark yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. numbers here. So I, I feel like if I went back to them a bit more and did it again, I'd probably give them like all different numbers or something. Yeah, like your channel is um, a lot more serious than my channel yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like you do really technical yeah. stuff. You've hurt my feelings today, but at the same time, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, man. no, that's sorry. fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll recover eventually. Um, but like, who's the kind of person who should go to your channel? Because you have a very yeah. unique channel. So my channel, yeah, it's it's pretty niche. Um, my channel is essentially the channel for if you want to learn to make perfume yourself, if you want to learn the art of perfumery, which means learning how to work with raw materials and, you know, how do I pick which raw materials, where do I go and buy those? And then, you know, how do I start making perfumes, for example? How do I, how do I start thinking about blending them together? What, yeah. you know, how do I even just think about making a perfume? Mm. Um, what process do I follow? What do I do? Then that's kind of essentially what I cover. Would people who don't, necessarily want to start making perfume straight away still be interested in the kind of content you produce um potentially like if you're if you're quite into fragrance in general yeah. and say you're into the individual notes i'll do a lot of videos just where i go through um different notes and for example different raw materials both natural mm -hmm. and synthetic which you might put in them so for example recently i did a video on oud where i compared some real oud to some different synthetic oud bases mm. so when you see oud as a note on the perfume it's interesting to know about these raw materials because these are very likely a lot of the things they're putting in these perfumes. So it's interesting to know how the actual just pure thing on its own smells like. Yeah. Uh, I recently did a video on vanilla. So the different types of, well, how does real vanilla compare to synthetic vanilla? So your channel really is for someone who is really passionate about yeah. perfumery yeah. and like learning about the, the art. And, yeah, exactly, um, exactly. And so it's not just from an interest point of view, but also a technical point of view. There are barely any channels yeah. that uh, have that kind of content where you, you, can, you yeah. can learn how to yeah. create perfumes. Perfumery in itself is an art form that's just really hidden. It's really mysterious yeah. still to this day. Exactly. There's so little information. Like when I started doing it, it was so hard to find any useful info online yeah, yeah. about how to make perfumes. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons I started the channel because I thought, you know, once I finally kind of worked out, you know, how, how does this all work? I was surprised that there was no I didn't feel like there was there were many good sources of content or anything on the internet to really help you with that. Amazing. I mean, there are different forums and things, but you have to do a lot of searching around to really, yeah. you know, and it's like very awkward compared to most yeah. other things you can learn online. Yeah, agreed. And as you said before, you have your own brand, Lux E Terra, which people will see as B-roll as well. But I got your two. Yeah, the uh, name. The name is terrible. It's so hard to pronounce it. Um, no, it's cool, but... man. It'll become a household name soon enough, anyways. <laughs> So you've got three francs and I'm going to leave a link to the sample yes, you can try, yeah. which you're, at the moment it's only UK only, but eventually yeah. you have more uh, destinations. So I'm, I'm working on doing US shipping quite soon. So okay. hopefully in the next month or two months, I should be able to finally ship to the US. Fantastic. Yeah, so they're very store. So all the, the perfumes that I make, the idea is about the brand to make it a bit different from your other fragrances. Yeah. Is all the perfumes are very like story and artwork driven. Mm. And the idea of the brand is about being almost a bit of a fantasy perfumery brand. So the idea is that these perfumes, they kind of invite you to enter a new world or they, when you're wearing the perfume, the idea is that you can imagine yourself in this alternate reality or there's an element of world building to go along with the perfumes. So it's not just, oh, you know, put on the perfume. You can treat it like that, of course, if you want, like any other perfume. But the idea is that each perfume has its associated kind of story with it and, you know, 
kind of like fantasy kind of you know alternate kind of universe which you can kind of if you know if you're into kind of more and being more imaginative or you want to mm. kind of step off into a dream world when you wear your perfumes yeah and the idea is it invites you to kind of escape a bit no they're, they're extremely intense and extremely creative <laughs> fragrances like this is a, a very yeah like these are the kind of fragrances you put on your skin and you have to keep smelling it and really as you said learn the story yeah. behind it you got some very beautiful notes and you're like you got like oak barrel wood chips yeah. in one of them yeah. uh, vanilla you got like bourbon vanilla in one of them yeah. um you got uh cherry rum yeah like the, the notes that relate to the fantasy story yeah. that come with each fragrance yeah. and then you have your more what i would say more this is more safe yeah this fragrance. is maybe a more like close to a commercial okay less niche um to a commercial perfume. This one's like the Eau de Toilette. By virtue of sunbeams yes. is what it's called, yeah. So this one was released last summer. Yeah. And this one is meant to be more of just like a casual, like fresh, light, more sunny splash on fragrance. Mm. Um, it, so it's weaker, not as high concentration. It's, uh, it doesn't last as long. Well, but. you say that. You said this is an Eau de Toilette. I'm, I wore this in winter time. It's, I think it's my, even <laughs> my favorite of the three. I really, really like this. Um, and it's a summertime Eau de Toilette, but I still got at least six yeah. hours on my skin, which is yeah. very impressive. Um, your other fragrances, I got about twenty-four hours, yeah. and they're insane. <laughs> like they're very, very intense. I think as some as someone who's um, you know a bit newer to perfumery, yeah. uh, my brand's a bit younger. I haven't been doing this for so long. Mm. I think one of the worries I have always is, are people going to complain that the perfume don't last long enough? No. So I always try to <laughs> over. I try to over. You know. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, if this is going to be an over the parfum, then this is really going to have to last like yeah. a long time. But it's good that you have um, you, you know how to do that, so yeah. you, know, you can dial it back if you need to yeah. instead of having the other problem. But this is a very creative perfume. It's, uh, you know, you have a very you, you have a unique mango accord that's yeah. special to you. That's very good. It's a long lasting mango <laughs> accord. I really like this. As an Egyptian, Egyptians love mangoes, by the way. Yeah, um, I think mango to me is as well one of my favorite smells. So yeah. for me, that was like. Almost the core, one of the core notes mm. in that perfume. Yeah, like I, I, that's why hopefully people who are really into perfumery, like really passionate people, yeah. should definitely try your stuff. It's, yeah. it's definitely stands out in my Thank opinion. You. So yeah. And the other, the other thing that makes say the brand unique is that because I'm the manufacturer, yeah, as well, you know, the perfume, the manufacturer, the brand, all in one, it means that unlike a lot of other brands, yeah. I'm not having to add a massive markup for like a middleman. So. Normally, when you have a perfume, right? They're very nicely. Uh, a lot of the profit yeah. of the perfume goes to the shop, and okay. then there still has to be a profit for the, you know, distributor, manufacturer, all of that. So, by being a manufacturer, direct to consumer, okay. it means that I don't have to add all of these extra markups. So you essentially get a perfume that's like half the price for the same perfume would have been by like another brand that had said gone and sold it on through like a chain of other people. Mm. Um, so I like to think of them as trying to be really good value fragrances, or you get a lot for the money as well, if that makes sense. Fantastic, amazing. Uh, Sam, I have to say it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, you too, mate. For, uh, Thanks for inviting me on. on. No, it's, absolutely, it's cool. my pleasure. It's really, it really makes the channel more exciting, more dynamic, <laughs> and uh, I get put in my place because my 10 out of 10 friends <laughs> are actually more like uh, six out of well, 10. Well, <laughs> this is like my, my uh, opinion. Do you have so. anything to say to the audience before so, we go? <laughs> yeah, no, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Glad you made it to this point, and remember to like and subscribe. Um, to Omar's channel if you haven't already and also consider checking out my channel as well if you're interested in creating your own perfumes can you say class dismissed <laughs> class dismissed <laughs>